guys, uh, I'm Eric Rodebois. This is EPGD Attorneys at Law, Five Minutes with Eric. Uh, I just did a one minute video where we were talking about a fact pattern or a story where a guy decides to sell his company. And so when he's selling his company, his agreed sales price was $30 million. And the buyer agreed and they had all the paperwork. And when the, it was $30 million, cash. And so with the cash, you put it in your bank account and you move on with your merry life and there's no strings attached, right? And that's the real key, no strings attached. Well, at the 11th hour, the buyer, or the, yeah, the buyer decided to pull a switcheroo. And what they did is they changed their mind and they said, we'd like to pay half in cash and half in stock in one of our other companies. And the seller had a decision to make. Um, either he could walk back out and kill the whole deal, or he could accept this new uh, offer. And he did accept the new offer. So he accepts the new offer, the lawyers change the paperwork, and now he is a minority shareholder in some other company. It happened to be a Delaware corporation that was closely held, meaning it was not publicly traded. So there's a limited number of shareholders, uh, maybe call it like eight. And so there's eight shareholders, tens of millions of shares, and there was a, a share price. Now there's a couple important takeaways. Now he's a shareholder in another company, meaning that, that those shares are only worth something if the company does well, and if there's a market or an opportunity to actually sell the shares. And with most closely held companies, there's no market, right? So it's not like you can go to the New York Stock Exchange. There, there's not like an easy method to buy and sell the shares in the company. And so in the shareholders agreement, he had some rights. And one of those rights were that he would be notified if anybody else was selling their shares. And there's a couple good reasons for that. Maybe he'd wanna just make sure that people weren't gonna offload and leave him stranded. Maybe he wanted to see like, oh, there's an opportunity. I can go along with you. I can buy and sell with you. Maybe the buyer wants some of my shares, right? And, and so he had this right. He also was given an observer seat on the board. So in a corporation, a Delaware corporation, here's the levels. Top level, you've got the shareholders, right? And the shareholders are supposed to have an annual meeting where they're going to elect a board of directors. Then the board of directors are going to get together and they are going to elect the officers. The officers are generally the president, the secretary, and the treasurer. Sometimes you'll make vice presidents. I've seen lots of different positions created, the CEO, the chairman, whatever. There's all, you can be creative, you can come up with different titles, but let's just go traditional. So traditional, you're gonna have a president, secretary, treasurer, the president is entrusted with the day-to-day -day operations, and then the president will hire the employees, right? So from the bottom up, you got employees, officers, board of directors, shareholders. And so our guy was a shareholder, and he was an observer on the board, meaning he actually didn't get a vote, but he was supposed to know what's going on. Now, most closely held companies, they either have board meetings where they will keep written minutes, that's when you have traditionally a minute book, and you'll have the secretary whose job it is to take the minutes. Um, I'm actually the secretary on a couple boards of nonprofits here in Coral Gables, and uh, it's my job to sit there and diligently take notes, and they'll make a motion, and it'll be seconded, and you'll follow all the old, uh, Rob's rules of uh, order right here. I have my little book. Um, and so anyways, he would be an observer. Now, again, they traditionally would either have minutes or what most companies do and what most of my clients do is they do what's called a written consent in lieu of a meeting, which basically means let's just write down what we're all going to agree to and then let's just sign it. And we can even do it electronically, email it to me, uh, send it over DocuSign, and that will have the same effect as a board meeting with board meeting minutes, right? So instead of all getting together in a conference room and talking and then, do you agree? Okay, let's vote, all in favor, aye. They just say, hey, we're all gonna agree to this, right? Okay, great, let's just write it down, email me the written consent. So what ends up happening is, allegedly, and I say allegedly because there's some shenanigans, I think there's some backdating, I think there's some people trying to clean up a mess, but basically what happened is, there were allegedly written consents of the board agreeing to allow one of the board members, shareholders, to sell on his own. Now, our guy had no idea. Uh, he was, you know, even though he's a board observer, which by the way, just between us, if he's a board observer, wouldn't he presumably get to know about the written consents of the board? That's the board taking actions, which is the same thing as if they have a meeting. Well, he, he never knew. He had no idea that, that they were taking these actions. And long story short, the main shareholders who were the buyers of his other company ended up selling all their shares and getting out and then driving the company into the ground. And now our guy is left holding what are now 
worthless shares. So yes, he did get $15 million cash, but now he's got $15 million of worthless shares. So remember, whenever you own shares in a company, it is speculative, it is risk. It could go up to a million or it could go down to zero. Um, and therefore you need to be very careful. You need to protect your rights. And in this case, it looks like we're gonna sue some people for the board taking these actions without giving him notice as a board observer uh, was entitled. So if you guys have any questions, I know this is complicated. Anything about stocks? Uh, also, we talk a lot about LLCs. Leave a comment below and I'm happy to chat with you.